These series of videos are demonstrating how to automate economic policy through code. A link to the GitHub repository is included in the video description. In the previous video, we learned where project configuration is declared. In this video, we're learning how to boot camp ourselves into the project with a shell script. Okay, start Docker if it's not running. Open a terminal. And if you're in a fresh dev container, the services may already be running. So run make list pids to test for running services. If the command prints an empty list, like it did here, run make start to spin up your stack. We'll keep tailing the log in this shell and open another. Okay, taking it from the top. Run make bootcamp to begin. The first instruction says, make rule to see a request and response from services rule. So, run make rule. Scroll back to where the command was fired, and it prints the request the service was sent, the response, and a brief note showing what to look for in the response to understand what the service does. Now, the request the rule service was sent is a transaction items list between the grocery store and Jacob Webb accounts transacting bread and milk. The note at the bottom says, Observe the additional 9% state sales tax transaction items returned by the rule service. Now to the response. The transaction items list returned by the rule service shows a bread item with a nano ID in this rule exec IDs list. Scroll down to the next item in the transaction items list, and here's a 9% state sales tax transaction item with a matching nano ID in its rule exec IDs list. So you know this is the tax added by the rule service when it found bread. The next transaction item in the list is milk with its rule exec ID. The transaction item after is the state tax for the milk item. Okay, you see the file path to the service, the host, port, request, and response. You know where to locate the rule service and what it does. Moving on to the next command in the bootcamp script. Make request create to see a request and response from services request create. Okay, fire that command. Make request create. The note says, Observe timestamp values in creditor approval time and null values in debitor approval time. The creditor sent a transaction request to the debitor. Scroll up to the request. Grocery store, the creditor, authored and approved the prices in these transaction items by sending this transaction request to the request create service. No approval timestamps here. For example, in the milk transaction item object, but in the response from request create, that same milk object has a timestamp assigned in the creditor approval time property, and the debitor approval time property has a null. So as the note says, the creditor sent a transaction request to the debitor, and now it's waiting on an approval from the debitor. Moving on to the next command, make request approve to see a request and response from services request approve. Fire that request approve command. And the note says, observe timestamp values in creditor approval time and debitor approval time. The debitor approved the transaction request from the creditor. Scroll up to these properties in the response. You can pick the milk transaction item again, 
Timestamps are assigned in the creditor approval time and debitor approval time properties. And that was after the Jacob Web account user sent the request approve service their account name, the ID of the transaction, and their role, which is debitor. Next command. Make balance by account to see a request and response from services balance by account. Run the command. The request and response for the Jacob Web account balance is printed. And the note shows a conservation test proving we started with 1,000 per account, or 3,000 total. And that total did not change after the transaction. That is, we don't have governments allowing chametz into the total by counting the notes banks purchase from borrowers. Okay. Make request by ID to see a request and response from services request by ID. Make request by ID. Scroll up to the request. Jacob Webb wants to see the transaction request which has an ID of 1. And here it is. The debitor approval time from Jacob Webb is pending. Make request by account to see a request and response from services request by account. Make request by account. Scroll up. Jacob Webb is looking for the last N transaction requests, so a list of transaction requests is returned. You can tell the transaction objects and the lists are requests because their equilibrium time is null, and that means at least one of their transaction items is missing an approval time. Next command is make transaction by ID and the Joe Carter account user is requesting a transaction with an ID of 2. The transaction has an equilibrium time, so all transaction items and approvals have timestamps. Remember, if all approvals from debitors and creditors in a transaction item have timestamps, the debitor approval time and creditor approval time in a transaction item are labeled with the latest approval timestamps. They're the same here because the first couple of records in the transaction table are inserted by the seed migration. But you can rewind to the request approve output to see them set at different times by the services. Next command is make transactions by count and Joe Carter is looking for the last n transactions. So this list of transactions with equilibrium times has transaction items with approval timestamps assigned in debitor approval time and creditor approval time properties. The next instruction requires adding code. Now add log.println hello cadet at the top of func main in services transactions by account command main.go to restart the service with a code change. Press any key to continue. Open services transactions by account command then main.go. Scroll down to the main function. And at the top of the main function, add a hello cadet print line statement. Now back in the bootcamp shell, press any key to continue. The instruction says, switch to the initial shell to view the log entry from the transactions by count code change. Press any key to continue. Switch to the terminal tailing the log and the transactions by account service logs hello cadet when starting. Okay, next instruction. Navigate to localhost on port 10009 in a browser and sign in on the web client as Jacob Web without a password. Press any key to continue. Copy the URL in the instruction. Open a browser. Navigate to the URL and sign in with Jacob Webb without a password. 
Okay, we know how to get to the client. Next instruction. Navigate to localhost on port 10,000 in a browser to view the graphical explorer. Press any key to continue. Copy the URL. Back to the browser. Navigate to the URL. There's the graphical playground on port 10,000. Moving on. Make see client test to end-to-end -to -end test a transaction in a headless browser. Now fire that command to execute end-to-end -to -end tests. All end-to-end -end tests pass. Now run make reset db to reset the database for integration tests. Make reset db. And we have a fresh database. Make C test, test local, to test service integration locally. Make C test, test local. Service integration test pass. Now make list PIDs to print a list of running services and their PIDs. We already know this one. Make list PIDs. Next says, Optional. AWS configure and make build dev to build a cloud dev environment in your own AWS account. Cost 60 cents a day. Press any key to continue. You need to use your own AWS admin creds if you want to build a cloud dev environment. Managing accounts and credentials is a bunch of busy work, so just send a bill. Okay. Make stop to stop services locally. And that's it. In the next video, we're moving on to Kubernetes. There's a lot of features to add, like the ability to query transaction data streams, which empowers the public to access real-time business and economic performance indicators. If you're interested in maximizing the fidelity of information signaling in the economy, you have to ask yourself, why would I want an estimation from an analyst or committee once every quarter when I can measure performance myself in real time? So we'll have to add streaming query and workflow tools an identity provider, a permissions layer. We're going to need a bigger boat. You may subscribe, share, and contribute from the buttons and links in the description.